So talking DK for next patch, uh, I think I've kind of narrowed it down to what would be, I guess, best in slot in terms of just raw powerhouse damage for mag DK. So whatever race you are, just uh, just fill that in there. Either you're going to have more sustain if you're like an Argodian or um, a Breton, or you're going to have a little bit more damage if you're running Dark Elf or High Elf. Of course, this is a no CP build. Uh, so we're looking at right, extra HP because of Cyrodiil, all points into Magicka, and we're going old school, right? We're going back to Twice Born, Twice Born Star. The reason being is because the innate axiom that I was using in my last video that I was talking a little bit more about Malaketh, um, the fourth piece was critical bonus, right? And we don't, with, with Malaketh, you're not going to be able to crit. So this extra critical is, is roughly about three or 400 effective spell power. I mean, as you can see, my effective spell power is through the roof on this build, right? So we're going back. So we're running the lover for the pen because we're running heavy armor. And so because we're not running light armor, we, we don't have the passive from light armor um, from concentration. Uh, Prodigy is useless because if you're going to run Malakath, you can't crit. So this is this, this makes um, heavy ar uh, light armor useless on a mag decay. And then um, so we're missing out of the pen, but we get the pen back via the lover. Now you can run the the apprentice if you just want straight raw damage. You can see my spell my spell damage right here at 4500. If you're having a hard time with uh survivability then it gives us the option to run resistances right because then you can just run the lady and that will shoot you you'll be a fucking juggernaut as you can see right here with your spell resistance at 30k and your physical resistance at 26.4k yes on the builder your base crit is zero but you have to remember that on the new patch uh, with gray you're going to gain i think it's 1350 so that's quite a bit of extra of extra critical resistance i think it's about 20 percent. i mean we can take a look at it here uh, let me see let's go 50 gives you an about yeah, it's going to be about 20 percent. i think you get like 1350 so it's, it's literally 20 percent reduction which is more than enough 20 percent critical critical reduction is more than enough uh for for especially for no cp so with that said you can either like i said you can run the lady you can run the apprentice if you're having sustain issues, which I don't think you really would. You can run uh, the atro, or you can run the mage. Your best bets if you're having trouble with heals, you can go the ritual, and you'll get about another twelve percent healing on top of the eight percent that you get from heavy armor. So this build allows for a lot of customization, right? So you can either go health recovery, you can go for extra stamina recovery, magic recovery, etc. Right. So the, this this setup allows for literally maximum customization. You definitely want the pen from the lover, and because because um, we don't have to run in pen anymore, now we can literally go full glass cannon divines, which is going to cause our spell pen to be maxed out at sixty seven uh, forty two, and of course for max damage you want. You want to run sharpened. Sharpened is going to be your max uh, amount for just raw damage. You can run Nurnhone if you want. It, your your effective spell power will go down a little bit, but your healing will go up. Right, your healing from Cauterize and your healing from Combat Prayer will go up. But I think running the Apprentice for me is more than enough. If it doesn't work out, I always have the ability to swap. But let's just say we'll go this route for maximum damage and then we'll we can always scale back. If it doesn't work out, you just flip right over to the lady. Boom, you're good to go. That's going to give you an extra. Uh, what are we looking at here? We're at 40 percent and 34 percent. And that takes us to 46 and 40. Right. So we gain an additional 6 percent mitigation. So it's entirely up to you. Try whichever one works for you. In terms of the sets, you go with a clever alk, either helm or shoulder. It doesn't matter. Clever alk is going to be on the back bar. And I decided to go resto to kind of eke out more damage to be able to heavy attack. Because when you're running heavy armor, you're going to have access to, right, to revitalize. Revitalize gives you an additional 25% to either your magic or your stamina whenever you heavy attack. 
And the same thing is true when you use a resto. Resto gives you um, bonus. Resto gives you bonus um, magicka when you heavy attack. So you gain 25% for being in heavy armor and an additional 30% for using a resto staff. So that gives you a lot of resource return, at the very least, from your magicka. We're drawing from a really deep pool of stamina. I don't think. I would have stam stam recovery issues, especially because one, we've got a shorter pot cooldown. Instead of being 43 seconds, our pot is now uh, 35 seconds. We've got heavy armor uh, constitution, so that's going to give us back stamina via the constitution pass. If you're going to get back 554 every four seconds, so you should have enough to heavy attack. I mean, you should have enough to CC break. And then on top of that, because of the Earth and Heart passive, whenever you fossilize somebody, you're going to um, you're going to gain back extra stamina from Mount from uh, from helping hands. Right. So we've got that on the back bar. You can run shattering if you want the If you want more healing, you can see the healing right there. It's 7570 for the heal. Or if you want, you can run um, fossilize for the root entirely up to you. But since I'm not running coag, I would might be I would might lean towards shattering just to literally have as much healing as possible because we're running molten and we're not running power lash so that's a lot of healing and as a DK you're slow as fuck you have no mobility you're gonna get targeted which is why I dropped a race against time um, and went with dragon fire scales the reason being is because um, actually with dragon fire scales up which is why I would recommend going with the apprentice because it, it reduces the, the the you know by 50 percent so you're going to have a lot of mitigation from ranged it also increases the damage that you reflect as you can see this is you're revitalized by launching a fiery ball the attacker that deals 8,000 damage this is a no cp is 8,000 damage return from no cp it also it, it will also increase your healing so you'll be able to heal more combat prayer for the minor berserk again because of Malakath literally giving you an additional 25% uptime, having access to an additional 8% um, from the Minor Berserk really goes a long way. Plus, it gives you a heal. Plus, it gives you um, the Minor buffs for 8 seconds. So, you've got one healing here. You've got two here, three here. You've got a reduced pot. Plus, you have some healing from whenever you leap. And you can see the tooltip on my leap. Right. So I didn't go race against time because we have access to a gap closer. Right. So even if someone does root you, you've got a nice gap closer that will literally pull you to your target where you can. And of course, this is in line with the Ardent Flame, which allows us to gain access to that really beefy Molten Whip. You can see the Molten Whip tooltip is higher. Right. And then we've got engulfing. Actually, I didn't even account for the engulfing. So in terms of the extra bonus damage, I wonder if it works. Let's see. I think last time on the builder, it wasn't working correctly. So with engulfing up, let's see if we got a change. I didn't even notice that. So let's see. It was that what was it? 19 and change. Yeah, it still doesn't take it into consideration. So we would have to. Um, so so all of your fire abilities, like literally everything here, would be increased by an additional 10%. So your molten is looking at around 21 21,000. Your uh, relenting would be about 8,000 just under and then of course we can see the tooltip there and then you can add an additional 10% to your ferocious leap <clears throat> and then you've got a little one on back bar you can run magma show if you want to run for some group utility or you can just slot sigic on your back bar and gain, gain um, an additional 8% damage reduction whenever you go to your back bar to heal it's entirely up to you magma shell is really good for a group play uh, either in small scale and cerdo or for battlegrounds, it gives everybody a fifty percent. It gives everybody a damage shield equal to fifty percent of their HP. And of course, as you can see, anyone who's running heavy armor is typically going to have around this much HP, and li you're literally giving them a thirteen k damage shield. Entirely up to you. You can run with either one, or you can just go Sigic and then toss Temporal Guard on your back bar, giving you the, eight, the additional eight percent damage reduction. Entirely up to you. Um, because we're, we're not going to be running. Inner light, so you can either run degen on the front bar so that you gain access to the passive and then you gain the extra magicka on the on the front bar, which is going to be your damage bar, or you can just move it to your back bar and then put 
shattering rocks on your front bar so that you don't have to bar swap into a CC, which you can. You can bar you can combat prayer into a CC bar swap and then immediately go right into your rotation so that you gain access to that beefy uh molten whip. And then of course this is with um clever outcup the only thing that of course is missing on this particular build it's entirely up to you you can either run kina if you just want more healing right because the higher your spell damage it's going to affect your healing or you can run scoria like i said in the other video because scoria is going to give you an additional 12 something pen and the extra the pen is stronger than uh the 129 spell damage that you get from kina it's entirely up to you this of course you're running two spell damage with a shock glyph on the front for the additional uh 8% damage from minor vulnerability and i think that is about it looking forward to testing this build you can actually run a a, a variant of this right now the problem is of course you're going to be running all divines and then you're literally going to have no critical resistance so this is definitely a build that i'll probably be playing um for the most part i'm have to see if i want to purchase it to farm malakath but it's a huge huge chunk of damage um that you will be missing out on if you're a pvp or especially if you're someone who plays in no cp thanks for watching take care be sure to like comment and of course subscribe so you don't miss out miss out on future content